So, it's been a while since I last posted a video and first of all, I want to thank everyone who stays subscribed to the channel and those of you who subscribed even during my absence. Really, really, thank you. I'm pretty sure you don't want to be bored with the gory details of what happened. Basically, I got a full-time job as a customer service rep and started having panic attacks and going to therapy and taking medication. But during that time, that was a very rough patch for me. Something that remained constant was my love for cinema and filmmaking. There were a few movies and TV shows that made me feel understood and less alone during those times, such as Phoebe Waller-Bridge's masterpiece Fleabag, Bo Burnham's groundbreaking comedy special Inside, and the irreverent and delightful CW TV show Crazy Ex-Girlfriend. But one of the most influential discoveries that I made was, of course, Greta Gerwig's filmography. Even though I have to admit that most of those movies focus heavily on the experiences of American white women, I felt seen by the characters in Lady Bird and Frances Ha and Little Women. Those feelings of truncated aspirations and loneliness and yearning for something better really, really helped me connect with the films, especially in those times. This is why I want to take advantage that Barbie just came out to talk about the basics and the beginnings of Gerwig's filmography. And maybe that will shed some light on her latest film starring, of course, Margot Robbie and Ryan Gosling. So, without further ado, let's dive right in into today's topic. Gerwig began her career as an actress, appearing mainly in independent films that belonged to a subgenre called mumblecore, a genre of narrative film focusing primarily on the intimate lives of young characters and featuring scenes of ample dialogue and minimal action. According to the Merriam-Webster dictionary, these are what I consider to be the main elements of mumblecore. Low-budget production, amateur actors, narrative heavily focused on character, scripts with lengthy dialogue and naturalistic lightning and scenarios. Examples of such movies are Lowell from 2006 and Hannah Takes the Stairs from 2007, both directed by Joe Swanberg and featuring Greta Gerwig. Both of them would later co-direct another mumblecore movie, Nights and Weekends, Gerwig's first time directing. However, I think it is fair to say that Gerwig's career started to take off when she starred and co-wrote Frances Ha with her now partner Noah Baumbach. Actually, they fell in love while they wrote the film, and all that, let's say, love, really, really reflects on the film. It tells the story of Frances, a young woman in her late 20s who aspires to become a professional dancer. She is broke, single, and misses her best friend who moved out of the country recently. Still, she remains optimistic and hopeful. The movie is shot in black and white and follows Frances through her trials and tribulations. It can be considered mumblecore, but the format is also reminiscent of the French New Wave, a very similar and highly influential movement from the 1950s and 60s. And what was the genesis of the idea in terms of doing uh, this sort of portrait of this 27-year-old woman adrift in New York? Was that an idea that appealed to you or was it something he came to you with? He was interested in doing something. I, I mean, we, he immediately talked about so, kind of the French New Wave portrait of youth type films and that he, he really loves those and kind of trying to do something in that in that style or that world or that tradition. One of my favorite reviews of Frances Ha reads as follows. Frances lives in New York even though she actually doesn't have an apartment. Frances is an apprentice in a dance company even though she is not really a dancer. Frances has a best friend named Sophie but they're not talking to each other at the moment. Frances yearns for so much more in life, but still she enjoys life with unexplainable joy and lightness. According to Studio Binder, most mumblecore movies feature aimless 20, 30 or 40-somethings just trying to make their way through life. People entering adulthood can relate to someone just needing to find a job while making a relationship work. In this sense, Frances is caught in a state of yearning for a life she can't yet achieve and we follow her through the struggle. The main focus of the film, though, can be found in the relationship between Frances and her best friend. 
In what is probably my favorite monologue in the history of cinema, Frances expresses what she really wants from life and love. It's that thing when you're with someone and you love them and they know it and they love you and you know it, but it's a party and you're both talking to other people and you're laughing and shining and you look across the room and catch each other's eyes, but, but not because you're possessive or it's precisely sexual, but because that is your person in this life. And the most beautiful part of the film is that we see her fulfilling that desire in the end, but not with a romantic partner, with her best friend. In this way, Frances Ha is the story of a woman struggling with adulthood that also highlights the importance of platonic female relationships. Does any of this sound familiar? I particularly love these words by Monica Baritzel. Bartizel, I think, yes, <laughs> sorry. Frances is in love with her best friend Sophie. Their bond isn't sexual, it's the codependent love that comes with ultimate familiarity of being so in sync with another person that you have your own way of speaking, your own way of navigating life. Beautiful. What we'll see next is how the traces of Mumblecore can be seen in the rest of Greta Gerwig's filmography, and how she uses that to construct her female characters. Lady Bird follows Christine, a 17-year-old teenager during her last year of high school. It's a coming of age that shows a young woman finding herself and struggling with attaining independence as she deals with the turbulent relationship she has with her mother, portrayed by Laurie Metcalf. Besides being a rite of passage, the movie explores themes such as masculinity, generational gaps, mental health, and economic inequality. Gerwig's directorial debut was highly acclaimed by critics, debuting in Rotten Tomatoes with a score of 100%, going down only to 99%. Keeping with the mumblecore style, Greta Gerwig presents a story that exists mainly in the private sphere. Its locations are classrooms, bathrooms, bedrooms, and dressing rooms. It depicts domesticity and places the viewers in familiar situations that help them relate to the heroine, since mumblecore filmmakers place careful attention on daily experience. According to the Masterclass website, Mumblecore filmmakers make films about themselves and their friends' lives. The stories usually focus on the young characters' work and personal lives, efforts, generally failing to get started in the adult world, and managing romantic entanglements and friendships. Lady Bird is not a movie based on the real experiences of Greta Gerwig or her friends, but she does look into her own emotions to create her female character. The film, in a way, was inspired by events from my own life, but I tend to start with things from my own life, and then pretty quickly they spin out into their own orbit. Sam, I've already had a Coke Zero. Good Sam. I don't know any other way to say it except for none of it actually happened, but it's all true. We see Christine's relationships and friendships, and ultimately, starting her adult life at a rocky place, feeling nostalgic and somewhat heartbroken of having left the place she struggled so much to get out of. In my opinion, one of the biggest accomplishments of this movie is the way it portrays daughter-mother relationships, showing the duality of them, how they can be oppressive but also warm and comforting. In fact, the first scene of Ladybird perfectly represents this striking contrast. Lady Bird and her mom drive back home, listening to an audiobook of John Steinbeck's novel Grapes of Wrath. As it finishes, both of them have a peaceful moment that rapidly turns into an argument, due to their different personalities. The scene ends in a high place when Sorsha Ronan's character jumps out of the car. In this way, Gerwig introduces the two women, their contrasting views on life and their complex relationship which is explored in other iconic scenes from the movie, for example, the famous dressing room scene that depicts the strain that exists between them. I love it. Is it too pink? What? Why can't you say I look nice? I thought you didn't even care what I think. I still want you to think I look good. Okay, I'm sorry. 
I was telling you the truth. You want me to lie? No, I mean, I just wish... I just... I wish that you liked me. Of course I love you. But do you like me? I want you to be the very best version of yourself that you can be. What if this is the best version? At the end, when Ladybird experiences for the first time the trials and tribulations of adult life, even if they were estranged, the first thing she does is to reach out to her mom in a monologue that's filled with homesickness, sadness, and nostalgia. Hey, mom. Did you feel emotional the first time that you drove in Sacramento? I did, and... I wanted to tell you, but we weren't really talking when it happened. All those bends I've known my whole life, and stores, and the whole thing. I love you. Thank you. I'm... Thank you. Another important thing to mention about Ladybird is that I believe it is also the love story between Christine and her best friend Julie. They separate during a good portion of the movie as the heroine looks for new friendships and romantic relationships, but after going through the disappointment and disillusion of not being able to connect with all these other people, she picks her up at the end to go to the graduation dance together, something that seems to me it's reminiscent of teen flicks. These elements of domesticity, womanhood, and female friendships can be seen in Greta Gerwig's next films, such as, of course, Little Women and Barbie following the thematic thread of Frances Ha. I have to confess that Little Women is my favorite Greta Gerwig film. I truly believe it is an achievement not only adaptation-wise, but filmmaking-wise. But that is a topic for the next video, in which I will cover Barbie and Little Women. If you made it this far into the video, thank you. I really appreciate it. I can safely say expect more videos to come. I want to thank my editor, Janet, who is behind the camera. She is going to help me now edit the videos and do all the technical stuff. The beautiful thumbnail that you saw for this video, she designed it. She's very talented. I'm going to leave her social media in the description box so you can go check out her work. And of course, I'm going to leave my own social media in the description box so that you can get updates on the new videos to come. And without anything else to say, Thank you for watching and I'll see you next time.